Hi, this is Brian with BC Gurus, and this is part two of the Web Pages module, Web Page Workflows. In this video, you're going to learn a few web page workflows using Dreamweaver and Business Catalyst. The first one we're going to cover is how to create a web page in Business Catalyst, but then pull it down into your Dreamweaver and edit it there. We're also going to cover how to create a new web page inside of Dreamweaver and then upload it to BC, and then what you'll need to edit in BC in that case. We'll look at editing web pages inside Dreamweaver using both design and code view. And we're going to cover the web page options available to you inside Business Catalyst. The first process we're going to cover is how to create a web page inside Business Catalyst, then open that page in Dreamweaver and make changes to it, and then upload it and put the changes live on the web. But first we need to create the page. So to create a new page in, in Business Catalyst, you're going to click Site Manager, click Pages, then click the Add Page button. This part of the video is focused only on the workflow, so I went ahead and paused it and entered in all the information I need for this page and a little bit of HTML. Uh, we will come back at the end of the video and cover all the options that are available here when you create a page, but for now, I just want to cover the overall workflow. So what we're going to do is click Publish and this is going to put this web page live on the web. Now we can view our page by clicking the page URL here and you can see the sample content I entered here and everything else is the site template. Now for the next step I'm assuming that you want to edit this content in Dreamweaver. If you wanted to edit anything else you would need to edit the template which you can also edit in Dreamweaver but right now we're going to pull the page we created into Dreamweaver and we're going to make an edit and then publish it live to this page. Once you've launched Dreamweaver, you want to make sure that you've loaded the site that you just created that new web page with. So make sure this here is the site you're working with. If not, select it from this drop down. If it's not in that drop down, you need to import it. So you're going to go to Site, Manage Sites, and select Import Business Catalyst Site. Follow that wizard and it'll walk you through the import. And then select it through this drop down. Now, if you just imported this as a new site, your web page that you just created is already going to be here in your local files. So, this here is my local files. My page is not here because this site was already imported before I created it. So, what I need to do is download the file. So, I'm going to switch local view to remote view, remote server, locate my file which is this one right here that's highlighted, new web page, double click it, I just downloaded it, I can switch back to local view now and it opened my file for me. You can also see that now I have these business catalyst modules available to me uh, in Dreamweaver. Now Dream, Dreamweaver loads the template code along with the content code. So the area you want to edit is inside this uh, comment here that says Instant Begin Editable Content Area. So if we separate that out, it would be this part right here. If we look at it in Design View, you can see the content area is highlighted with this blue uh, border and we can make our edit right here and save the page now I'm going to go ahead and upload it so over here in our local view right click the page and select put and then if you return to your web page and click refresh you will notice that your edit will be live now you can also create new web pages inside Dreamweaver and then upload them to Business Catalyst and it's going to create a new web page on your site. So the way we're going to do that is by copying an existing page and uh, basically duplicating it and then editing the content to be what we want. So the reason we're copying a page is because the only unique content on the page most likely is going to be this content area and we want to preserve uh, or we want the page to use a template. We don't want it to be just content. So by duplicating this page, we get to create a new page that uses the same template. So what I'm going to do over here, 
find the page I want to duplicate and I'm going to use control C for copy and then control V for paste and that is going to put my new page right here at the bottom that is the new page we just created I'm going to open it up now you have a new page that uses the same template and you can edit this content however you want I'm just gonna make a few changes so it's obvious that this is a different page and once you've made your changes you want to save this page so you can do that by either right clicking here and selecting save or save as or you can just hit control s uh, you are gonna want to change the URL or actually you're gonna want to change this file name because you see this file name here new web page dash copy that is gonna be used as the URL or path to this web page so we want to change that to something new you can right click here and select edit then select rename sorry you can't see it it's off my recording it's gonna highlight the file name here and you can call that anything you want I'm gonna say new dash page and then you want to upload it like we did before so I'm gonna right click select put now we can take a look at what that created in business catalyst so we go to our pages and we should have a page in here called new page here it is notice that the page name uses the file name that we set so you probably want to change that you might you want to change this to whatever page name and probably page title that you want to use uh, by default URLs in Business Catalyst do not include file names so if we were to create this page in Business Catalyst this URL would just be new dash page it would not include .htm if that matters to you you can just click edit and remove the file extension it's not going to uh, affect anything uh, you can see it put this page in the same folder and use the same template as the one we duplicated and that's how it should work and then we have our new content here I'm gonna click update and we can view this page like we did the other one by clicking this URL and here we have our new web page next I want to run through some of the more important options here when you're working with web pages the page name is going to be used within business catalyst to identify this page so when you're on your pages list this page will be listed as new page and it's also available as a uh, template tag that's going to let you use this to create like a dynamic page heading uh, if you wanted all of your pages to automatically use this as the title of the page in your actual template you can do so the page title is used as the actual meta title of your web page so this is important for SEO reasons so you want to include keywords that you want people searching in Google to use to find your page they need to be included here uh, it's also used as the browser tab so if we look at the page let me slide this down you can see this uh, the text that's in this browser tab right here that is controlled by the page title next you have the URL to this web page and it can be edited by clicking this edit link right here and changing the folder is also going to affect the URL so if we were to change this from root to let me find one here terms you can see that folder was placed before the file name here you can create new folders in the file manager and if we go back to our pages you can see all your existing folders here so any of these are available to place uh, web pages inside them. Let's go back to our new page. Next you can select your template. Uh, I think most of the time you'll be using default but this is going to vary depending on your website. So if you're unsure what template to use you want to ask your uh, web designer about that. Clicking this more options is going to give you some other options. 301 redirect is what you use if this page no longer exists and you want it to redirect your visitors 
to a page that does exist. So this could be a a new page that is going to replace this content, or it could if this content is just something that doesn't need to be published anymore. This could even redirect to your home page. But the reason you'll use it is because if this page was indexed by search engines, uh, you don't want people who find it to land on a 404 page, which is a page not found. You want them to go ahead and be forwarded to a page that is actually helpful to them and retain them as a visitor to your website instead of them just landing on an error page and maybe going back and searching for something else. Release dates and expiry dates are going to control the time that this web page is actually live on your website. So if you do set these and the date, the current date falls outside of these uh, date parameters, this page is not going to be viewable online. It will be in your admin, but customers will not be able to view the page. Uh, unchecking enabled would do the same thing. The, this page will be available through admin, but not on the web. Checking exclude from search results is going to exclude this page from the search results on your website but it's not going to affect Google or Yahoo or any other search engine. This only affects your website's internal search engine. Now looking down here at the buttons, uh, update is going to update the live website with whatever changes you've made here. Save draft is going to save the changes as a draft so you can have someone else approve them or you can come back and continue editing later. If you click preview it's going to give you a view of the website the same thing that happened when we clicked this URL it just gives you a preview of the website with these changes and copy this page is going to duplicate the page similar to how we did in Dreamweaver lastly you have a delete button which it's not recommended that you delete this or that you delete web pages because you can never get them back so if in case you ever need this content again or, or in case it just wasn't the right decision for any reason. Uh, it's recommended that you just disable the page by unchecking enabled so that will remove the page from your website but the page will still be available through admin in case it was a mistake.